Hi everyone, I'm Mia McCormick and today we're talking with acclaimed cinematographer Kirsten Johnson. She's known for works like Fahrenheit 9-11, the highest grossing documentary of all time, Citizen Four, the story of Ed Snowden, and A Place at the Table, which documents hunger in America, just to name a few. She's won many awards, been nominated for two Emmys, and has recently become a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Kirsten, we're so honored that you joined us today. Well, I'm a big B&H lover, so I'm pretty happy to be here myself. So what drew you to filmmaking, especially documentary? Well, I have always been an image lover. I'm someone who uh, responds to color, to light. Grew up in the late 60s, early 70s when this country was in a lot of turmoil around race and class. And as a little kid, I really picked up on it and all of the dissonances um, didn't make sense to me and I wanted to figure out what's going on and I was also um, I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist and we watched lots of missionary movies and you know I remember sort of seeing the before and after of when missionaries came and the way people dressed before and after and thinking like wow I really like the before why are we putting on like why are we putting these khaki pants on people um, and so those questions uh, were what made me want to discover the world and I learned over time that a camera was a way that gave one permission to go out into the world and to go places that you weren't necessarily allowed to go. The camera is an incredible thing because basically it allows you, it gives you a reason to be close to people and then lenses can take you deeper into people than our eyes can actually go so that I can be close to a person going through a very intense situation and with a lens, I can see very deeply into their eyes as well as see the world around them. And so your understanding of context, both the person's interior context and the world around them is expanded in ways that it isn't simply as a person without a camera. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. No, you, you're, it's, it's, it's hurting. Yeah. yeah. You're making me cry even though I don't understand. Them. Yeah, it's okay. So you're seeing that behind the camera, but then how are you balancing in your head the technical aspects? how to connect with the person in front, yeah, and then where you're moving from there, right? Yeah. Because you are the one, as when you're doing absolutely. documentary work, you have to creatively think how to move this yeah. forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I, um, I'm probably the only person who laughed out loud watching Cartel Land when Matthew Heineman is shooting in the middle of a gun battle in Mexico and he changes the f-stop. Um, because that's what we have to do as camera people. You are in the middle of very intense situations, whether it's a violent situation or an emotional situation and you may even be risking your life to be there but if it's not in focus or it's not if the f-stop isn't right why are you there uh. I just feel like now I have to clean this up. Now I have to figure out what I'm doing. Now I have to get this back in order. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I suppose we have the sound of that. Yeah, well we got the image of it too. <laughs> <laughs> what film do you think you've experienced the most personal growth? Without a doubt, camera person. Um, you know, because it was a film, you know, I've directed a couple of films before, but this film is a film that I directed using footage that I have shot for directors over the course of 25 years. So the footage was all shot on behalf of other films, and what I did was to bring it all together as a memoir of the role of the camera person. I learned things I never imagined in making the film uh, about what this work is. I looked for the footage where I 
the footage that really haunted me for whatever reason. Maybe because I loved the people I'd filmed so much, maybe because we'd made a terrible mistake, um, maybe because uh, I, I still didn't know why I had made choices that I had made in the moment. So I wanted to go back into all of that footage, bring it together, and basically share with the audience what it is to be the person in the position of holding the camera. How are you connecting with the people in front? Like, how are you choosing the people to help tell your stories? Because when you walk into a situation like, like Darfur, yeah, how are you choosing the stories to follow? Well, I mean, one of the things that I feel really strongly about is that our work is built on a history of misrepresentation. Many people in the history of cinema have been misrepresented. They've been presented only as victims. They've been presented as people who are not as intelligent as they really are or resourceful as they really are. We've built a world of images that, that pity and patronize poor people, when in fact, poor people are the most ingenious of all humans on the planet because they're finding a way to survive in utterly impossible conditions. One of the things that happens to all of us um, when we aspire to become filmmakers is that we see movies we love and we aspire to things that we have seen before, as opposed to critiquing some of the things we've seen before and wondering, huh, why do we keep getting certain messages over and over again when they actually don't make sense with our world? So what draws you to take on a story? The only reason for films to be made is to show us things in a way that we have never seen before. So do you feel that women have a strong voice in this industry? Any woman who is working in this field is contributing um, in ways that are new, because if you look at the history of cinema, um, the presence of women has always been underrepresented, and women have always been there but not seen. The reasons why this is happening, I think, are quite complex, um, and they're coming in all different directions. So some of them are systemic, um, some of them are about who hires who, some of them are coming from young women themselves, um, worrying about how do I get good enough to do this and I need to be perfect and I need to know how to do everything before I do it. When in my experience, you learn by doing. You learn by failing, you learn by messing things up, you learn by being around people who have done it before and you need to be given the space by other people to learn. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Getting close to everybody, didn't we? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing, well, nothing wrong with being close. Yeah, exactly. That's what I always say. Keeps everybody warm. Exactly. <laughs> everybody needs to both have a respect for what the technique is in this world, but also we all have to bluff. We all have to like find a DIY solution in a critical moment because that's what especially documentary filmmaking is, but all filmmaking is. Nobody knows what's going to happen, so you have to be ready to improvise. But moving forward, do yeah. you see the voice at least getting stronger? Is there room for that to happen? Is there room for those mistakes I mean, to be I, made and for yeah. growth? I mean, I think there's no question that, that people really want to hear some different stories. <laughs> The world is a big place that we are not paying attention to in all of its complexity and diversity and What's great about this world in which technology is spreading everywhere is that all kinds of people all around the world have the capacity to have access to technology that didn't used to exist before. 
Now, what's the problem is that the system is still has a bottleneck where you can't necessarily get through and distribute the things that you're making because the gatekeepers are still saying, ah, we don't know if anyone's interested in women's stories. 50% of the population. We don't know if anyone's interested in a brown person's struggle. It's like, uh, I don't know, maybe all of the world is interested in this. So, so those gatekeepers are still operating with an old school mentality that needs to end. And I think people are pushing against the gates, but you know, that's power and that's money. And those gates are being held in the, against us. If you go into the independent documentary world, it's incredible lots of women directors, lots of women cinematographers, um, and that, that I feel like, you know, that system is being, it's shaking the, the other big system, but there's, there's work to be done. That's great to hear that yeah. there's a lot of women in that section Absolutely, of it. absolutely. But you know, that's also about, there's less money to earn there. There's less money being, you know, allocated to people. And so, and, and in, you know, in many ways, documentary is still the ghetto of film. Uh, and so, you know, that's something I think about in question. Why do we feel that documentaries are um, less meaningful than fiction films? Um, why do we value them less? Um, and I think in some ways it's because just on a human level, with a fiction film, even if it's about the most um, remarkable situation that really compels you, you can still walk out of a theater and say, it's okay, it's done, the film's over. None of those people were really real. But you walk out of a documentary and you've seen something that has blown your mind. All the people in the film are real, the situation's still real. And you have to walk out with the ethical conflict of what am I doing about that? And that throws all of us into a state of confusion and being overwhelmed. And sometimes we just can't take it because our own lives are hard enough. We'd rather be entertained than be challenged. So here is the main problem for us. We have to find a way to represent horror, to represent the death, respecting the golden rule, dignity. Kirsten, can you leave us with a few words of advice for young filmmakers? Yeah, you know, my first word of advice is be kind to yourself. Um, it's important to make mistakes when you're working. And it's important to be serious about the mistake making. But it's not in the service of beating yourself up and saying like, why did I naively go to Haiti when I didn't know anything that was going on, right? No, it's to say, okay, where am I going next? Why am I going? Who do I need to go with? What is the reason to do this? Um, so, you know, we all have found ourselves in situations where we realize we're the wrong person at the wrong time in the wrong place. And sometimes that has really serious consequences. You literally can get yourself killed or kidnapped. Um, or, and more often, what it means is that you make images of other people that disserve them. You make images of people that misrepresent them one more time. And I take that really seriously. I think we are the ones who have the power. We have the cameras. So yes, be kind to yourself, but also understand your responsibility and try to act in a way that sees people with dignity and respect and make films that people can love. Well, I for one can't wait to see what you're thank working you. on next. Thank you. So, thank right. you and thank you for watching. Thanks, Mia.